This is the Great Meadow of UC Santa Cruz, a stretch of unirrigated land that separates the campus from the city of Santa Cruz. With an average rainfall here of almost 30 inches a year, it's easy to see how a meadow like this could sustain itself. But most of California has nowhere near that much rain, and with many communities restricting the amount of water we can use, it's getting harder and harder to grow those lush green lawns. So, how to meet market demand for green grass that somehow uses less water? Well, that's what turf scientists at UC Riverside are working on, as we hear now from Carla Yarbrough. California and many parts of the country have its share of dry seasons. Keeping lawns green through the seasons can be challenging and causing us to use lots of water. Dr. James Baird, a turf grass specialist in the Department of Botany and Plant Sciences at UC Riverside, is working on developing a drought-tolerant turf grass that uses less water and stays green year-round. First of all, we're trying to educate uh, the general public about how best to irrigate uh, their lawn. Uh, I think that's still, still something I see on a daily basis is uh, that uh, grass tends to be overwatered and uh, most people think that they need to turn on the irrigation every day and, and that's just not the case even in our, our dry climate. So I think there's an education component with the type of turf grasses that we have. But on the other side, uh, we're, we're trying to develop uh, new turf grasses that uh, are, are better able to withstand uh, less water. One of the things that we're trying to uh, get more Californians to consider is to switching from a cool season grass to a warm season uh, species. And essentially these types of grasses are more uh, adapted to warmer conditions. They're, they're more dr inherently drought tolerant, more salt tolerant, and uh, just in doing so you're, you're looking at saving at least 20 percent uh, water just by switching the, the particular turf grass species uh, for, you know, from a cool season to a warm season grass. We see the real challenge being the, the color aspect and, and keeping that grass green year-round. The other more long-term aspect is from our department side in terms of our genetics program and our genomics program, we're trying to look to developing a warm season turf grass that's able to keep its color year round. Uh, that would be you know, quite an achievement, sort of the holy grail of, of, of turf, if you will. Our research at UCR involves hybridizing turf grasses. Um, what that means is we're taking basically two different varieties of turf grass, we're intercrossing those varieties, and we're creating a, a better variety. This is Festuca pretensis. So this is our drought tolerant, stress tolerant, tall fescue variety, or fescue variety. This is Lolium perenne. Um, it's ryegrass. So it's seen mostly in sports complexes. It's seen in overseeding of home lawns and such like that. Um, very well known for its uh, speedy germination. So what we've done in our research is we've taken these two varieties of grass, Festuca pretensis and Lolium perenne, and hybridized them. We've crossed them. The hybrid, basically, over time, initially it does not look like this. It takes many years, we have to go through and select this. So we select traits. Every time a seed is, produ uh, seed is produced, each one of those seeds has its own genetic makeup. So what we're doing with these tubes is, in these tubes it's one giant root zone. So this is one five foot root zone is what this is. And what we're doing to quantify root growth is we're taking these plants, all right, and giving them optimum growing conditions. If you look at this tube right here, you can actually see the roots growing inside the sand. And that's actually what we're measuring. Within five months, you know, cross your fingers, these tubes, the roots will be going all the way down. The turf grass project is located here at the Agricultural Operations Center, which is over 500 acres and about 45 different crops are grown. The manager of AgOps, Steve Cockerham, is also a turf grass specialist, and he says the university is involved in a national turf program. Here at, at uh, UCR, in the Turf Grass Research Project, we participate in a program called the National Turf Evaluation Program, and this is managed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in uh, Bellsville, Maryland. And what they do is they collect new grasses under in specific species from turf grass breeders uh, from around the United States and in some cases outside the United States. And you take these grasses and put them in different climates and see how they, they perform based on the climate. Another project that Dr. Baird and his team are working on is measuring gas exchange in the turf grass system. Graduate student Aaliyah Mills explains. Here we have an open path infrared gas exchange analyzer or Lycor 7500. What it measures is carbon dioxide and water transpiration as it moves through here 
measures it through an infrared beam. The data is processed using this LICOR box and it is recorded on the computer. There we can see where, how carbon dioxide is moving, if it's being transpired or stored, as well as how much water the grass is releasing. As Dr. Baird and his team continue searching for the perfect grass, he says the benefits of turf are worth it. You hear so much bad press about turf, but there are, are some important aspects of having the lawn and the landscape around. And so, you know, we're trying to uh, promote that through, through improved grasses or just, just trying, you know, to educate, again, people on, on the best ways to, to manage what they have already. This is Carla Yarbrough reporting for UC Riverside.